This is gibberish. Doesn't by looking at this, I will personally I will not be able to come up with anything. But now let's see. A totally new world will open up in a second. I promise you. Okay. So step by step now I go through everything I see here. 0, 2, and 4, obviously they are critical numbers. So 0, 2, and 4, critical numbers. They're not telling me these numbers, which are, you know, I will choose whatever. So don't erase anything, but this is done. The first derivative is positive, less than 0 or between 2 and 4. Done. The first derivative is less than 0 between 0 and 2 or greater than 4. Done. I know now <clears throat> for sure that this is a local max. Whatever I want to decide to consider this value. I know that this is a local min, whatever I decide here. And I know that this is a local max. Now I'm moving on to the second derivative. <clears throat> I have to insert a 1 and a 3 in the correct spot. And here it says that it's positive between 1 and 3, which immediately tells me this. Done. And it tells me that it's negative less than 1 for less than 1 and or greater than 3. Now I know exactly what I need to do. So the function comes from below, reaches a maximum. So this is an inflection point here, an IP. This is an inflection point here, IP. Why? Because the second derivative changes, changes sign, which means the function changes concavity. And the same thing here. So at 3 is an inflection point and 1 is an inflection point. So it's coming from below, reaches a maximum of my choice, of my choosing, comes down to an inflection point where it changes concavity. It will have a minimum. It changes concavity at 3. It will have a maximum. I'll continue to negative infinity. It's very clear what I have to graph. So here it is. And this really justifies this, this table. It really tells us the value of the table. So at, at 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it's coming from below, opening down, increasing to 0, whatever. At this point, no, at 1, we'll come down to whatever value I decide. It changes concavity. At 2, we'll have a minimum. Here's 2. That's the minimum. Continues to open up to 3, some, of, some whatever value I want. And at 4, it has a maximum. And it changes, it uh, opening downward, and it continues to decrease to whatever I want. So please don't be afraid of this. If you understand how the table works, you have nothing to be afraid of. Very good pick. Any questions about this problem? Any questions? Anything? OK, so now I would like to move on to a problem, uh, a graphing problem from the beginning till the end. So let's see what we want to choose. Some of these problems in this section. Um, so let's say we have find, uh, sketch the graph, blah, blah, blah. So 45 through 58. So some of these problems, um, I'm assuming and I'm hoping 
every group, every class I teach is different. Students choose different problems, different uh, um, situations. So we'll see. Let's see what you want to choose or I will. This is, this is an ugly situation because of the uh, rational exponents. It doesn't mean that we have to avoid it. I'm just saying. Um, this we have not looked at a similar problem. We have looked at polynomial functions already, several, two or three already. Um, so now if you want to choose uh, maybe um, a product like this between a square root and, a, and um, x, um, even this one, I think we had one like this last time, maybe a log, I think we did look at the cosine sine situation. And then I would like to move on to rational functions. Any preference? Anyone? Can we do 53? 53. Very good. So let's look at 53. And 53 uh, is uh, f of x equals x the square of 6 minus x. So <clears throat> you know when we are asked to find everything, you know what we mean. The whole thing. I get my table going from the very beginning. Not waste any moment. Every time you learn something or find something about the function, put it in the table ASAP so you don't miss it. Okay, how do I start? What will I have to do? Yes, awesome. Excellent. So what what do I write? In order to find a domain, what do I have to write? Anyone? I know you know what we need to write. 6 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. Thank you very much. I knew someone will save me. So negative. Thank you, Caitlin. Good. Remember what I do when I change, uh, when I divide or multiply by a negative number? So the domain of this function is negative infinity 6. So please illustrate that in the table. Negative infinity to 6. Perfect. So now <clears throat> I need to determine this limit. I need to determine what happens at 6. Can anyone tell us what happens at 6 so I can put it in for the function? Okay, so we're going to spend the, the night here because we don't know what happens at 6. Can you repeat the question again? Yes, I have to plug in 6 in the function. I need to determine the value of the function at 6. Oh, 0. Thank you very much. So now let's determine this limit and then x and y intercepts. So limit as x approaches negative infinity from x the square root of 6 minus x. So let's take it piece by piece. Where is this going when x approaches negative infinity? Uh, negative infinity. Awesome. Now let's check the here. Where is this going when x approaches negative infinity? Infinity. Excellent. What is negative infinity times infinity? Negative 
Isn't that one of our indeterminate? Not the multiplication. That's why I said not the multiplication. This one is, but this is a product. This one is one of the indeterminate cases. The difference, but this is not a difference. This is negative infinity multiplied by infinity. Very negative. good point. Good. Awesome. So now I we, now we need x and y intercepts, so I have to have 0 in the table. So please tell me what I have to write for the function. What is the function value when x is 0? Zero? 0. Very good. Awesome. So now we also want to check, um, although we have that, so uh, f of x equals 0. We have x the square root of 6 minus x. We already determined these two. It's x either 0 or 6. And we have them in the table. Which means we're done with this. Limits, x and y intercepts, all done. We do not ever, one more time, we do not ever study the sign of the function. No, only the sign of the derivative, the first and the second. So now this is done. Now I would like to look at the first derivative. So first derivative, f prime. I have to remember that this is a product. This is function 1 and this is function 2. First function prime, 1, times the square root of 6 minus x, plus the first function, but times this prime, 1 over 2, the square root of 6 minus x, times the inner function prime. Do I need to repeat this, or are we OK before we continue? Is this step OK for everyone? OK. Gabby said yes. If you say no, please say no, and I'll repeat. So from here, I have the square root of 6 minus x. I have to clean it up so thoroughly. So thoroughly. OK. What is the least common denominator? Anyone? Two times the square root of the square root of x. Thank you very much. Remember, this is over 1, so this one needs to be multiplied by 2 the square root of, two the square root of 6 minus x. When you multiply 2 by the square root of 6 minus x by the square root of 6 minus x, what do you get up here? Yes, but I'm going to write it like this first for everyone to see. Excellent. Indeed. The square root of 6 minus x times the square root of 6 minus x is 6 minus x with a 2 in front. Awesome. And then minus x. Perfect. So then I have indeed 12 minus 2x minus x divided by 2 the square root of 6 minus x. And you know that this is negative 3x plus 12. Negative. 3x minus 12 over 2 the square root of 6 minus x. Negative 1 times 3x. Negative 1 times negative 12. OK. And look at that. Quinn's um, um, question be, will be answered now. So two critical numbers. One coming from f prime of x being undefined and f prime of x being 0. Can anyone tell us where is this function undefined? Keeping in mind that the domain is this. I'm going to write it. Oh, I'm going to write it here again. Is there a critical number coming from f prime being undefined?
Anyone? It's okay if you're wrong. Is six the critical number? Absolutely, Absolutely. indeed. The function is defined at six, but the derivative is not. Awesome. So this is a critical number. From f prime being zero, can anyone tell us what is the critical number coming from f prime being zero? Four. Yes. Three x minus twelve equals zero, x equals four. Awesome. So this is another critical number. So we found another function that has critical number, a critical number coming from f prime being undefined and from f prime being zero. I found out something very important. I go back to my table ASAP. If the first derivative is undefined, it's a guarantee that the second derivative will be as well. And I have four. At this point, I need the sign of the derivative to the left of 4 and between 4 and 6. So I can finish this. OK. So um, let's look at the derivative. Which portion of all this? You will never plug in numbers because it's always positive. So I don't, I don't want to waste my time. Which portion has absolutely no way of having a sign change? Which one? Anyone? Are you talking about F prime? Yes, I'm only talking about f prime because I need to study the sign of f prime. So which piece of this you will never bother with because it's always positive and it will be a waste of time. Is it the bottom? Of course. Don't waste your time. So please plug in 0 in the numerator and tell me the sign of the entire derivative. Plug in 0. Positive. 0, yes. Very good. Positive. Awesome. Now plug in 5 in the numerator always, uh, only, because there is no need to even look at the denominator. Negative. Yes. Good. Awesome. Now I need to plug in 4 and determine this number for the y value for 4. 